evening. I had this box arrive for me from Poland the other week, and inside was something I'd wanted for quite some time. Namely, the track link from a German World War II Panther tank. So, it's kind of exciting to me. There it is in my workshop, and we're going to take a quick look at it. Uh, this wheel, obviously, the Panther is famous for having the interleaved road wheels, so those guide horns there both keep the wheels in line on the inside and the outside. So, having a look at the track here on the table. Pick it up by the drive horns. This thing weighs 21 kilograms, and just for scale... This is the pressed steel track link from a Goliath, one of those remote controlled mine uh, slash demolition slash munitions carrier devices. So you can see we've got the two track horns, we've got the two holes in the casting there for the guide sprockets. And on the front here we have a large deep web and a solid um, bar. You can just make out the triangular remains of the grouser. We're going to stick the tape measure on this. This thing is 660 or so millimeters wide. That's 26 inches. And 26 centimeters between the guide horns, about 10 inches. And then in depth, about 200 millimeters, about 8 inches. Where the guides connect together, the gap is about 85 millimeters. And the actual link is obviously narrower to fit in there, about 75 millimeters. Measuring between the two sprocket holes there, 300 millimeters, exactly one foot in old money. In fact, you can actually see some little wear patches where the wheels were. Now, I stuck a wooden rod in here to simulate where the track pin was because these things, these I had first thought were casting leftovers, but they are not. See where I turn my hand here to simulate the knuckle of the next track? They're clearly some kind of cast-in scraper for mud and or ice, which I had no idea about. A very, very clever little feature that I like. The web itself, when I test it with the vernier calipers here, is 10, yeah, 10 millimeters wide. Let's check another little part of the, the web just to be sure. Obviously, it's been in the ground for 80 years, so there's some pitting and corrosion on it. Nine millimeters. So yeah, ten millimeters across the web. Uh, one last check. We'll try and measure it in multiple places. There you can still see the gap where the grouser used to be on that bearing surface. Obviously, this is a well-used track. The pin diameter there. So the hole into which the track pin would go is twenty-two millimeters in diameter. So one assumes the track pin obviously has to be narrower. So twenty or so millimeters little margin for error and then we have the flanges on both sides the actual bearing surface of it uh, which takes all the weight is obviously rather large and heavy as the casting and that's what have we got there 47 millimeters in diameter Now we'll just have a quick look and close up at the casting marks. I'm sorry they're a bit too hard to read. Unfortunately, I'd love to be able to read those, but we've got a casting mark from the manufacturer of the link on each end. And that's it. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. A brief look at a track link from one of the most famous tanks of World War II. Thank you very much.